In this experiment, we're going to have a look at a titration. We're going to have a look at the reaction of sodium hydroxide with that of hydrochloric acid. We're going to take a unknown amount of sodium hydroxide and we're going to titrate this in a burette against a known amount of hydrochloric acid. We're going to place 10 centimetre cubed of hydrochloric acid in a conical flask. We're going to fill up the burette with the unknown sodium hydroxide. We're going to add an indicator and then we're going to titrate the sodium hydroxide in the burette against the known volume of hydrochloric acid and we'll work out then how much sodium hydroxide is required to react with that much hydrochloric acid and then we'll do an equation and reaction and basically a calculation as well to determine the amount. Our first operation is that we're going to take some hydrochloric acid and we're going to put that in this conical flask and to do this we're going to use a pipette and what I'm going to do is I'm going to suck up exactly 10 centimetre cubed of hydrochloric acid and place it into this conical flask. Now that we've got that done, I'll replace the lid on the hydrochloric acid. And now our next job is that we're going to add two or three drops of this indicator, phenolphthalein, to our acid. We only need a few drops because this is very strong. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to swirl the big conical flask to make sure it's thoroughly mixed. Because I can't reach, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a funnel in here and then what we can do is we can fill up the sodium hydroxide on the ground, making sure that the tap is shut first and then having put in the unknown concentration of sodium hydroxide in here, then we can put this back up on the bench so we can do the titration. Now the burette is full, what I'm going to do is put a beaker under here and I'm going to let out a small amount of sodium hydroxide into a waste beaker and I will then take the first reading on the burette. Now that we've filled up the burette, what we need to do is take a reading. And we look very carefully at the burette. And we look here, we can see an upper meniscus and a lower meniscus. Or perhaps some people even take an average. Probably easiest just to measure the bottom of the meniscus. And the bottom of the meniscus here is pointing to 32. So we'll take that as our first reading and then we'll do the titration. Now reaching near the end point, so what we're doing is we're now going slower and I'm going to add it now basically a drop or two at a time.
and there we have it there is the end point where it's just about going and now we'll read the burette now we've reached the end point we look again at the burette and we take the final reading and here looking at the bottom of the meniscus it looks to be about 38.4 let's have a look at some titration calculations the amount of moles equals the concentration times the volume divided by a thousand our HCL we had a two molar solution and we had 10 centimeter cubes of that let's put that into the equation so let's replace the concentration with two molar and we'll replace the volume with 10 centimeter cube and we'll do the calculation now we've got the calculation let's have a look at the equation HCl plus NaOH gives us NaCl plus H2O we've got a balanced equation so we can say that one molecule of HCl reacts with one molecule of NaOH to give me one molecule of NaCl plus one molecule of H2O. We can rearrange that to say that one mole of HCl reacts with one mole of NaOH, which gives me one mole of NaCl and one mole of H2O. Now we know the amount of HCl, we've got one mole reacts with one mole, so we had 0.02 moles, so therefore we will need 0.02 moles of NaOH and a volume from the titration was 6.4 centimeter cubed. We rearrange the equation, so the concentration is the number of moles times 1,000 divided by the volume. Let's substitute in, so we put in the number of moles, and we can put in the volume. We can do our calculation and work out that our molarity of our NaOH, our unknown solution, was 3.125 molar solution.